All right, everybody, welcome back to The Intellectual Gentleman, and it's time for our after-action report of the 28-watt big blue solar panel. So I took this with me up to Aconcagua, uh, and I'll be showing you a video I took while I was up there uh, as, you know, demonstrated how well this thing performed. But uh, before we roll into that, I want to give a brief overview of what this thing is and how it works. Okay, so I apologize for the semi-primitive nature of this setup. I don't exactly have a nice studio or anything just yet, but that'll eventually work out. So I wanted to just give you guys an overview of what this thing came with. Uh, so first of all, it's a 28 watt, and they do have another version that I'm aware of, which is a triple panel, so it would only be these three. Uh, the I believe that's a 24 watt. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with what watts are, that's the overall power measurement for what this thing can put out. So at its maximum, in the best conditions, this solar panel should be able to provide 28 watts of power. Now, to be realistic, as you can see here, there's a little guide. Um, you're going to have to have some devices that are really going to take a lot of power in order for it to actually need to supply 28 watts. But for all intents and purposes... When this thing is in the wilderness, that fact that it can provide that much power at a maximum is responsible for its really useful nature because it draws in so much power that even in very, very poor conditions, uh, it will provide enough power to charge small devices. So I have a little tester here, a USB safety tester, and when I was on the mountain, uh, I had that plugged in. And you'll see in that video, I'll point it out, I'm not sure if you'll actually be able to see the uh, voltage actually on the safety tester. It wasn't, uh, wasn't very good uh, lighting conditions for the camera. But it was actually able to still power on the safety tester and charge the phone in the conditions that you'll see. Um, but before we get to that, so just as you can tell, this there's a guide here. Each There are three outlets in this guy. And... Each of them is a standard USB. Uh, two of them say that they have a 2.4 amperage max, and then one is a 2 amp max. As far as I could tell in use, it did not appear that any of these had priority over the others. It seemed to be that whatever device was connected first was the one that would receive the most power if you had multiple devices connected. And then there's, of course, a little guide. Best sun, smiley face, and not so smiley face with clouds, and if it's raining, <laughs> he's frowning. So... Yeah, check out uh, the mountain review. Okay, so gear test for uh, Big Blue 28 watt solar charger. I wanted to show you guys this. You can see the weather currently is uh, not particularly favorable. And um, granted at 18,000 feet, the sun tends to come through uh, pretty intensely. But I've got a little... Uh, uh, tester on this guy on a cell phone. I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's reading 5.14 volts at 0.12 to 0.08 amps. And uh, just before the clouds really closed all the way in, it was still uh, putting out about 0.38. Um, and it's enough that this phone is actually still getting a charge, even in this kind of weather. And not to mention, this uh, panel has also sustained some damage as you can see, it was on top of a tent that actually blew away uh, when we were at um, Camp 1. The winds picked up, and, uh, and I was actually away on our, uh, our carry up to here. And, um, yeah, we came back, and this thing had been recovered by a few of the folks down there and banged up, but still works. So, uh, got to say, I mean, I haven't put anything else uh, comparable through its paces quite yet, but... Uh, this thing is so far really taking the cake as far as uh, cost benefit for uh, camping gear. And uh, yeah, it weighs a lot, don't get me wrong. Um, when it comes to solar panels, mind you, it's not actually very heavy at all. Uh, but pairing it with uh, a battery pack like an Anchor 10,000 milliamp hour or maybe a 20,000 is uh, the 10,000 that I've got has so far been an extremely good pair and has charged. Uh, not only all of my devices to include this camera, um, but also every other person's device in my expedition and some of the other expeditions that are on the mountain. So uh, 
it's a really good purchase. I'll give you my after action report when uh, when I get back home and have some time to really go into extra detail, but I wanted to make sure you guys saw this. Okay, so yeah, as I explained, uh, this panel got damaged um, and you can clearly tell just looking at it now, there's this large crack, there's a bunch of scratches on the surface. I have not tried to recondition this yet, though I'm confident that if I decided to polish it because it's a sort of a hard plastic like you'd expect on a CD, um, it'll probably polish up just fine. And I don't think that this break in the cover actually affected the uh, capability of the solar panel to generate power, uh, or so it has seemed thus far. Also, uh, this guy comes with four carabiners, each of which can clip into the holes that are on the end of the panel. Um, and the way that I did the setup was I actually ran this across the back of my backpack and having it sit on the back with the sun out, just walking for an entire day would easily charge up the anchor battery pack that I carried with me. The battery, which I happen to have right here. This guy is a 10,000 milliamp hour and I'm not sure what the exact weight is, but it was definitely the lightest of all the battery packs that I found on the mountain. Many of which were actually rated much lower than this. Um, and it's a really simple device. It's actually just three uh, battery cells in here, li uh, lithium polymer cells. And then I, I, I think there might be a fourth, but uh, they put a circuit card right under here. And there's an LED light that of course, when you press this button on the top, it displays how much uh, power the battery pack has left in it. And if it charges, it'll have one light blinking or, or several if, you know, depending on how much charge it has. And if you plug it into something, it should begin charging immediately. Uh, but sometimes you'll have to press this button and then it'll begin charging whatever you have plugged in. And it's a standard uh, micro USB and then a USB. This is where you would plug in whatever you want to have charged. And of course it says right here input. Uh, and that's where you plug in to charge it up. And so all I did was stick this guy inside of the Velcro here and had it plugged in to one of the outlets. And throughout the day it would just charge up. And it only took about three or four hours on a semi-favorable weather day for it to charge the battery pack entirely. So yeah, in conclusion, can't say it enough, it was a very useful piece of gear, uh, very worth the price, and um, definitely something you should consider taking with you, especially if weight is not a consideration. And even if it is, that guy was, uh, like I said, responsible for being able to charge the devices of everybody in a half dozen sized expedition everybody's phones everybody's battery packs and uh, despite the unfortunate fate of the solar panel receiving some damage it still performed very very well when other people's solar panels uh, I did actually see a goal zero out there completely fail uh, I'm not saying this that couldn't happen that can always happen with electronics but um, yeah, I gotta say, having gotten beaten up, um, I highly recommend this guy. So if you need one, definitely pick this one up. I would recommend getting the 28 watt just because if you get the 24, it's gonna be slightly less powerful. And, and unless weight is really a consideration, I'd get the bigger one. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.